Um, and, you know, we would meet weekly so I could give them updates on like how things were performing and decisions that were being made. And so we could hash things out so we could get to, you know, get the brand to where it really needed to be. Um, and that was the process. So I was really fortunate enough that I had people who trusted me. Um, they saved me the headache of like putting together, wasting time, putting together some monster business plan. I was really able to kind of go. And so from the time of finding this piece of real estate and deciding we wanted to do this business to opening our doors, it only took us six months. Um, and in that time, we built the entire brand, came up with the name, the menu, built out the entire restaurant, negotiated the lease, signed the lease. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's an unbelievably quick turnaround for a full, fully vented uh, restaurant. Concept. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a quick turnaround for, a, for a, 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 a national brand, let alone something that doesn't exist yet. Yeah, just about um, anything. So. Well, let, let me ask you, so you're, you're working, the environment that you were working in, would it be common for somebody in your position to go to the people you're working for and go, hey guys, by the way, I got this great idea. Do you want to get behind me on it? Or, or was that part of the environment there? Um, I don't think it was necessarily part of what other people there were interested in doing, but um the uh the CEO of that business is very entrepreneurial, um great guy. Uh and you know, it totally encouraged that the entire time I was there, but that was part of the reason I went to that company. Mm-hmm. Well, I think oftentimes sometimes opportunity is right in front of us and we don't realize that or look at our own potential to present a solid business idea or plan. To the, whether it's the people we're working for or people that we're surrounded by, because oftentimes those are the best people to work with. And clearly uh, you're a success story to that point, right? You know, they were, they were right there and helped you get the thing going. Absolutely. Yeah. So how did you, uh, how did you pick your other partners? Was Josh somebody that you'd work with uh, at this company or is he somebody new that you brought on board? And, and what were some of the first steps that you guys took? Absolutely. So, um, the original investors still um, are in the business. They, the, the company, uh, they've grown dramatically since then. Um, it's now a company called Fortified Brands. They own the majority of Mel Chop. Um, and uh, Josh came into the business about two years in. Um, and he helped me uh, basically from store three. He was there for like, he came in like a month before we opened our third location mm-hmm. um, and has helped me and we've worked together um, to scale the business um, to what is now 16 stores, um, 16 shops, I should say. Um, and he has, he's really um, been heavily involved in getting our franchise business off the ground. Um, I'm really responsible for, all brand creative, uh, all product development, all corporate operations, um, and, uh, really create our processes and procedures around anything that we do, um, from a, from a product and ops perspective, Josh is really responsible. He, he, he loves systems. He's like maniacal about like our POS systems and how like everything connects. Um, and so he really, oversees um and owns that side of the business as well as our franchise he's, he's built our our, the, our franchise business model um it is responsible for managing those relationships and selling the business um a lot of times we do the selling together because we just like collaborate and, and, and work off each other so well when we're talking about the business which we're both super passionate um but uh that's how we kind of divvy things up and, and it's uh it's a uh, you know a great partnership so the the name Melt Shop did that come from the items that were on your menu, or did you come up with the name and then develop a menu around that, or what came first? No, so the name the the the, the idea for a grilled cheese concept came first. We 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 have evolved into what we call we we believe we created the melted sandwich category. So we started out as a grilled cheese shop. We've evolved a lot since then. A lot of our sandwiches are really like melted sandwiches, and not necessarily like grilled cheeses. So we do like fried chicken melts and grilled chicken melts and uh, burger melts and that sort of thing, um, which we think are definitely way more than just, not just a grilled cheese, but as simple as a grilled cheese, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but so the name, 
the name came after we kind of finished the product offering and the name was so freaking hard. I mean, the number of people, I mean, in order to create the entire concept, at least V1 of what Melt Shop was, like what we rolled out at 601 Lexington, like we, I can't even tell you how many like survey, I had a, I had an email list of about like a hundred, hundred friends and family members who I would just like send out these surveys and just get so much feedback and that was so helpful for me during the process. Like, and then when we were doing like recipe R and D, I'd bring them all over and have them like test everything and give me feedback. And then when I was trying to figure out, it's like, all right, you know, grilled cheese, it's, it's something that's hard. Um, it's not as portable as say like a hoagie or a burger, right? Like mm-hmm. it, it doesn't travel as well. Cause like the cheese needs to stay melted. Right. So then I started en- like engineering all sorts of packaging to see what like really help this product travel the best and i'd have all these people over and have them do like these blind tastings and so um yeah i'm 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 going on a little bit of a tangent here but you know i think uh we um we got a ton of feedback when we were were first kicking this thing off yeah so well you know it's interesting uh when you go through that process because everybody's got an opinion as to what's the best name or what represents your concept the most but at some point it really comes down to what you're passionate about and what you want to call it i think it's a wonderful name sticks um and the menu itself tell us a little bit about the menu because um i just i've gone through it like i mentioned there's just so many fun items on there between the tater tots and the shakes and the you know the kids stuff i saw you got pickles on there um where did you come up with having this type of menu and these items yeah i mean you know the it started out as really just like a, a grilled cheese concept and it was like mostly focused on, like all the original r&d was like sandwich based and then we realized like we need to add you know complementary items to this to you know create a well-rounded offering to ensure we have a sustainable check average, um, you know, to, to, to grow this business, to also make sure it works for multiple day parts. Um, and so we focused a lot, like the majority of our energy at first on the sandwich R and D, which took the most time. Um, and then we're like, all right, what, what could be like a very cool, craveable, um, differentiating side item that people would, you know, get excited about. And so we, 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 we tested uh, homemade potato chips. We tested fries. We tested all sorts of things. And, and we realized like no one was really doing tater tots in the, in the city at the time, especially you no know, fast casuals were doing anything like that. And we're like, how could we, everything we wanted to do, we wanted to do a style. We wanted to add some cool garnish or topping or just make it up, make it more than just, just a, a plain tater tot. And so, that's when we start. We, we decided we want to do our own version of tater tots, add, add like a, a garnish to it. Um, that's what we started with was just a plain, what we call shop tots, which is a tater tots with par- parsley and parmesan shake. Mm-hmm. Um, and they sell like freaking crazy. <laughs> it's nuts how many people buy tater tots. Uh, but over time, we're like, all right, how do we expand this part of the menu? So, then we started making our own cheese sauce. And I think we have like the best cheese sauce in the game. It's killer. Um, they're like, all right, how do we up the ante a little bit more? That's when we landed on the loaded tots. Um, so we have three um, gourmet tater tot options. Um, they're all delicious. Uh, we will likely be rolling out some limited time offer tater tot option next year. Um, but we, and we've been doing R and D on that for a while. Um, but, uh, you know, tater tots are, a huge seller for us. Um, milkshakes, you know, similar thing. If I can kind of fit with the overall concept, it, uh, we started off um, with a very simple shake program. We still have a very simple shake program, but we're, you know, I think we, our shakes are amazing. They complement the offering really well. We sell a ton of them. Um, and, I, you know, it's like we just thought to ourselves, like, what would really fit within the DNA of, of this, this brand? Um, and it was it was kind of like cool creative spins on American classics was mm-hmm. really like how we kind of got our start. Sure. Um, and uh, now we do things that are you know even a little bit bolder. Like we right now we have a, a smoked beef brisket with chimichurri, right? And, and like we're we're layering new ingredients into the fold with our limited time offer program. Um, so some things are really classic some things are 
um, maybe a little more innovative or something you might not expect in the menu. And generally, I mean, what we, we really uh, like to hang our hat on is just like the craveability of our, our menu offering. Like it, it, nothing goes on our menu. If it's just not craveable, if it, like if you leave Mel shop and you forget what you ate, um, I'd be shocked uh, mm. because we really put a ton of time in making sure that like everything is, is memorable in some way, shape or form. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm looking through your website. Of course, the menu is a big part of that. I can just tell that you guys are having a good time with your business and the items that you're offering to your customers because the way that it's presented, the names, um, the styling of it, you know, you, from a fancy bacon melt, I see cinnamon sugar donuts with vanilla cream. Um, I think I'm going to go inside, and even though it's lunchtime here, I'm going to make some breakfast tachos at my house. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I, I, I just appreciate how you've presented your concept and your and your menu here online because it, it looks like you're having a good time. Um, let let me ask as or be as bold to ask: Are you making money and having fun with this as it appears? Listen, I think it's a very challenging business. No matter what restaurant business you're in, right? Even yeah. the ones that are absolutely crushing it, restaurants take a ton, a tremendous amount of work. Um, I think uh, the fast casual space. QSR space has gotten unbelievably crowded over the last couple of years. I think um, the continuous increases in labor costs um, over the last couple of years have been, you know, very challenging to, to handle, um, especially in, in markets like Manhattan where you have really high rents and now you have, um, you know, delivery is making up a very substantial part of the business. So you have all of these, um, significant uh delivery fees that are starting to creep in um and have a big impact on the dnl so listen we have some stores that are crushing it we have some stores that are doing okay um we never stop having fun in terms of just like the brand is fun like our mission is to bring people joy um and i think we really do that through our food um but we're still young and we're still learning what our sweet spot is in terms of what type of location performs the best um, for our brand, our product offering, and, and what we do um, every single day. And so I think that's a long-winded way of saying we're doing well. We continue to do better. Um, and as we continue to grow, we're getting smarter. So, um, you know, the results um, continue to improve, but it doesn't mean that we don't have our fair share of headwinds given all the uh, – the, the, the dramatic changes that have taken place in the industry over the last couple of years from the, the expense side of the equation, um, those being like labor competition and, and delivery. Um, but we can, we continue to, to figure out ways to uh, improve our performance. And we're still very, very excited about um, where we're at and what's to come. Um, we have a number of new franchisees in the pipeline um, and, uh, yeah, you know, things are, things are going well. How, how do the franchise franchisees or the prospective franchisees receive you? I mean, obviously you're, you're, you're a younger person. You've got a successful opportunity for them. Um, and I would imagine that people that are interested in buying a franchise have been in the restaurant business and, or have some experience and all of a sudden they're like, wow, you know, a young guy here running this company with this great idea. Has the relationships been well, or has it been tough for you? How, how does that go? I mean, we we have really strong relationships with our first um, handful of franchisees. Um, we've yet to have a bad relationship with any franchisee, which is great. Um, I think they like how differentiated our our product is. Um, they like how um, how cool our brand is. They like the fact that Josh and I are so passionate. They like the fact that you know. Our stores have multiple day part potential and low cost to build and work well um, in a number of different footprints. Um, they like the fact that we're very collaborative and want franchisees to contribute to, to new ideas and innovation. Um, so, you know, I think um, one might view the fact that we're young and up and coming as a deterrent. Um, and, you know, some of the, those potential franchisees might, might not be the right fit for our brand right now. 
that said, um, a lot of people like have 